anyone? Hello everyone. With the medium's release date fast approaching, we wanted to share with you nine curious details about the game that you probably never heard about. So let's take a deep breath and start counting. Number one. The core idea of the medium and of the two simultaneous worlds started back in 2012. The game was initially to be released on Wii U, Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Although it was pretty much a different game back then, you can still find mentions of the medium online, with the initial announcement in the form of an actual postcard still floating on the internet. How times have changed when it comes to marketing games. Number 2. Two key characters of the game, Marianne and the nameless man that's bent on revenge, have been based on two famous Polish actors. Veronika Rosati, who you will soon see in Never Gonna Snow Again, helped design Marianne. I need your help first. While the man uses the likeness of Marcin Toroczynski, <coughs> who you can recognize as Vasily Borgov from the Netflix original series The Queen's Gambit. Number three. The medium is somewhat of a reunion tour of the Silent Hill Dream Team. The game's soundtrack is co-created with Silent Hill's main composer, Akira Yamaoka. Mary Elizabeth makes a return with vocals, while Troy Baker plays the character of the Moor. Why, hi, <laughs> silly little girl. Number four. The medium takes you to an abandoned hotel called Neva. Although the name has been changed for the game, the place, it actually does exist. The real name is Hotel Krakowia and is located in the city centre of Kraków, Poland. The developers, they wanted to give it a one-to-one -one rendition, so they went and explored the place to carefully recreate its atmosphere. You can take a look at it on Google Maps in case you want to visit the place before the game is released. Number 5. Marian's home, where the game starts, is located in a real apartment building in Kraków, Poland, near Mateka Square. Curiously, the same building, or rather what it would be like in 2084, can also be found in Bluebird Team's previous release, Observer System Redux. Number 6. All the cutscenes were mocked and recorded by the lead developers and meant as precise references for the motion capture actors. These mock-ups proved invaluable when the pandemic hit and the proper recording sessions had to be directed remotely. <laughs> For the mock-up sessions of The Moor, Bluebird team hired an actor walking on stilts to better depict the creature's towering posture. All in all, the game has around 90 minutes of cutscenes within an 8-10 to 10 hour long game, with some of the cutscenes using the dual reality mechanic, so you can watch the events unfold from two different perspectives. Number 7. You can check the level of your spirit energy by looking at Marianne's arm. This is just one of the ways that developers wanted to make the game's UI as minimal as they can, so that the players can immerse into the medium's world as much as possible. Number 8. The game takes place in an abandoned communist resort, so naturally, there are quite a few mentions and objects in the game connected to that era, including a wrecked Maluch, a cult classic tiny Polish car, now valued by fans of retro automobiles worldwide. And finally, number 9. The medium hides a lot of secrets, pop culture references and little easter eggs. You can find allusions to Bluebird Team's previous games or, for example, spot some of the developers on postage stamps. Let us know what you found once you get to play the game. Happy hunting! <laughs>